when it comes down to it, librarians and instructional designers are there to support faculty. And that, that is basically how I, how I start looking at the process of finding and adopting OER. I know what my goal is, and that is to support the faculty. So here are four of the, the roles uh, that a librarian can play in the adoption process. And we'll look at each of these separately. There can be many roles, but these are the four that I, that I decided to go ahead and highlight. Librarian as researcher. There's so much content out there that it can be difficult to narrow down. So librarians can help you narrow your search or even just show you where to get started if you have something specific in mind. So if you say, you know, I want a video on this particular topic, you know, we can tell you where to get started. Um, faculty are the content experts, but the librarian's job is to be able to guide you to a good place to start. <coughs> And in looking at that content, you want to keep a couple of things in mind for the selection process. And we could spend an entire webinar on each of these, so I'm only going to touch on these briefly. But licensing is a legal document, so it doesn't apply automatically. Um, it does or does not grant users certain rights to use that content. Now, a copyright exists without you having to do anything from the moment of creation. So if I decided to write an article um, and I haven't published it anywhere, it's on a piece of um, paper on my desk, that is actually copyrighted in a very informal way. And then accessibility is a really big topic that you want to pay attention to with OER selection. Um, again, this is only touching on, on a couple of things with the topic, but um, when, you're, when you're using videos, you want to make sure they're captioned. And not only that, but you want to make sure they're accurately captioned. For example, when you're using something like YouTube to caption your video, you want to make sure it's accurate because it's sort of hit and miss. They've, gotten, they've definitely gotten better with that. Um, materials need to be uh, read, be able to be read with a screen reader. Uh, alt text needs to be used for images. And um, you want to make sure that there is an accessibility statement so that if for some reason a student is in the course and there's something that isn't accessible, that they know, they know who to contact to say, hey, this isn't accessible. Um, please do something about it. Librarian as curator. So what I've done at the moment, um, the easiest way for me to collect all of the different resources <coughs> that I want to recommend to faculty, the easiest way for me to do that is through a LibGuide, which is software that librarians use to create essentially a website. So um, I don't know if you can see on the image how clear it is, but I have a tab there for um, repositories, open textbooks, journals, video, audio, images, pretty much everything. And generally, when I'm working with a faculty member, this is where I start, because I want them to have one place that they can go to and have it be a place where they can you know, get answers to simple questions or difficult questions. Now, if you came to this webinar looking for you know, um, a couple of quick places to start. Here, here are some of those. And these are just personal preferences. Um, if you go to that website directly, you'll see that I have uh, lists that, that list several more of these. Um, but for repositories, I have oercommons.org. Textbooks, um, I really like to use OpenStax. And then uh, University of Minnesota's Open Textbook Lab. Journals the directory of open access journals, 
And images, my favorite is, is searching through the Creative Commons. I just saw a question from, from Quill West on the side there. I'm sorry, I haven't been checking the, the chat box as often as I thought I would. But um, Quill asks, um, when you're helping faculty find open materials, how do you decide when you've found enough? That is a really good question. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how I work with faculty, but it definitely starts with one-on-one, -on -one, um, in person, virtually, a meeting with that faculty member so that I know what they're looking for because I don't want to overwhelm them with a ton of information and then maybe they'll use one thing out of there. So I really try to do um, a really thorough reference interview and that way I know what they're looking for, I know what the goal of it is, and that way I can get it for them. But having said that, I always like to give them choices because faculty are the content experts. So librarian as educator. There are different schools of thought on OER, and I wanted to highlight this one, open versus free. Now within my institution, we use both. And if, you know, if, for example, um, I were using free resources, that refers to library resources. So the library at NOVA pays for a subscription for, for access to journals, videos, um, articles, e-books. So it's called free, but it's not open because anyone in the world can't access it. It's behind a firewall. Now, if we do create an OER course and we include library resources, what we, what we usually do is create a placeholder so that if another institution wants to take that course and use it, they'll know, OK, there's, there's a statement here that says we're, we're using a library resource, you may or may not have access to it, um, or you may want to find a substitute at your own institution. And here's another, another chart just to look at. I like to highlight this because when it comes down to it, open, the term open, is important to faculty, right? We want to be able to say, you know, anybody in the world can use our courses and they're completely open, have at it. Free is what, what is important to students. So when it comes down to it for me, my first priority is, is the students at my institution. And then after that, I think about open. Now, one exception to that is with the Achieving the Dream grant, all of our resources must be open. So it's definitely something that I keep in mind. And then librarian as content creator. I think sometimes librarians can fall into stereotypes. And librarians of today are definitely not that stereotype. Uh, so we are creating content that is used in courses um, all the time. And one of the things that I do is I create videos because my students are all online. And they can be you know, brief um, tutorials on how to use a particular database or how to tell the difference between a scholarly journal article versus a popular article. Or they can be just simple recordings of webinars, because I know students can't always make live webinars. So what I do with those is I collect them, again, in one location. And that way, if a faculty member would like to embed those within their courses, I can get, them, get to them quickly, but, but the faculty can as well. So in supporting OER adoption, this probably touches on what, what I've already talked about a little bit, but um, 
it really is, for me as a librarian, one-on-one -on -one consultations, whether it's in person or virtually. That really gives me a good sense of what I'm researching. I also do in-person and online presentations and workshops. Um, sometimes they're, you know, well-planned in advance, or sometimes, you know, I have to have a, you know, a quick um, spiel ready just um, for on the spot if a faculty member drops by. I also act as a copyright go-to, and I'm not a copyright expert by any means, but I do keep um, a lot of links and, and you know, to websites that I trust, that I've gotten information from, just so that I can consult those really quickly and give the best answer that I can. Staying up to date on the topic is really important. And that LibGuide that I showed you, I'm always looking for the latest resources. I'm always trying to add resources that could help. And then, of course, marketing your support through email and websites. Um, a lot of faculty don't realize that they have this source, this librarian, um, who can, can help them out. And, you know, it's just so important to make sure, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that they know that I'm here. Otherwise, um, they'll, they'll uh, you know, they'll tackle it themselves, which is fine. And a lot of faculty that I know um, are really great at researching. But for those that are new to it, I just want to make sure they know that I'm here. So that that is my quick overview <laughs> from a librarian's perspective. And I guess I'm wondering if there are any questions that I missed in the chat box. Um, there were some questions, um, and uh, I, I can I can repeat a few for you um, that came in a little bit earlier. We'll try and do it in the order that you ask the questions. Our audience asked them. If we miss one, uh, just enter it again um, now or at the end. So uh, John asked, um, do all the 